Your signature scent is the most important scent in your collection. It is the fragrance you will most likely wear the most and people will associate you with that smell. For example, whilst testing our upcoming fragrance release, I'm always wearing this. I'm having more and more people telling me nowadays that this fragrance smells like me. This smells like Omar. They like the smell, but they associate it with me. Your signature scent can have two different approaches. In the fragrance world, in my opinion, most fragrances can be categorized as either very easy and functional, and then there are fragrances that I think are artistic and have more character and make you more unique. They have similar outcomes, but they approach it in different ways. That is what this video today is about. 10 functional fragrances you can wear as your signature, 10 artistic fragrances you can wear as your signature. A signature scent has to be something you can wear most of the year round, both in day and nighttime. Let's get into it guys. Class is in session. Functional fragrance number one, we're going to start off with Dior Sauvage, EDT or EDP. This is a fragrance for the guy who likes mainstream culture. You don't care about being unique necessarily, but you want something that works. This is the epitome of functionality. Sauvage is the fragrance for someone who wants something that is long lasting and will still get you a lot of compliments. If we go over to the artistic side that has the same outcome, long lasting, lots of compliments, it's going to be Moschino's Toy Boy which still is modern and cool and different in my opinion. So it's sort of like you're still keeping up with the modern trends and culture, but it's very different, nowhere near as safe as Sauvage. You are a lot more artistic for going for this fragrance, which is based around the notes of rose and pear. Same outcome as Sauvage in a much more interesting way, and it's very underrated in my opinion. Functional fragrance number two is YSL Y EDP. This is a very traditional masculine fragrance as well. More unique than Sauvage, but it is for the guy who is an athlete, in my opinion. It's the kind of guy who wants a workhorse daily fragrance that lasts on you all day, gets you a good amount of compliments still, but then you go to the gym with it afterwards. It's got that sharp herbaceousness that works for that function. If you want a very masculine, still sharp uh, fragrance like that, but in the artistic side, you go for the Animalic YSL Kuros, which is the counter part to YEDP in my opinion, but for the guy who doesn't care about compliments, you still want that masculinity. It has that clean barbershop style from uh, herbaceous notes like in Y, but you, you, you're going a lot more polarizing now. I think it's still beastly. Um, I think you can go with either Kuros or Antaeus. If you, want, if you want to get a more safe approach to this animalic DNA, go for Antaeus, but it has a similar effect of being smoky, long lasting, masculine. And I think at the end of the day, once it's calmed down a bit, you can go to the gym with it as well afterwards. Number three, Bleu de Chanel. I'm talking more about the EDP and the Parfum. They're a bit more heavy in their daily use. They are more thick uh, fragrances. They still have a good performance, but these are the, the most safe guy kind of fragrances. This is the kind of guy who doesn't want to mess around a lot. He wants to have something very safe, either for himself or to buy as a gift, but he wants to be gentlemanly and smooth. You're a kind of reserved personality type. On the artistic side of things, you can achieve this effect with Guerlain's L'Homme Ideal EDP. Maybe tone down the trigger number of sprays you go for in the warmer seasons, but this is a similar effect in my opinion, a very smooth gentleman's cherry fragrance. Instead of going for the safe shower gel DNA of Bleu de Chanel, you're going for something that has cherry in it, powdery leather, sweetness of vanilla. This is something that is truly memorable and creates a very suave atmosphere to you. Tom Ford's Oud Wood. This is everyone's beginner Oud fragrance. It's the classic beginner first Oud scent people buy in their collection. The function of Oud Wood is that it's beginner friendly, but it still stands out. So it's an, an interesting way to uh, branch out in the, from the usual fragrances, but it's the number one, one of the best selling Tom Ford fragrances for a reason, everyone loves it. So if you want a safe way to get into Oud, Oud Wood is the one for you. But if you, again, if you want to be a bit more artistic, you go for a, a rose and Oud combination. That's going to be either Penhalgen's Halfetti, Mancera's Black Gold, or even uh, Zerjoff's Alexandria II. These are a lot more interesting. Rose and Oud really goes more towards the Middle Eastern style, Oriental. I think it's an e these are still quite beginner-friendly Oud fragrances, but they go more of an artistic approach to the, the Oud combination. So not a lot of guys are gonna wear rose, let alone rose and Oud. So if you wanna 
be more even more interesting in your beginner oods uh, choice go for one of these three next choice in the functional category is terra d'hermes now you might say that the opening is not is more artistic it is an artistic fragrance overall still but i would say it's uh, still mostly on the functional side in my opinion uh, because it still has a lot of traditional masculine facets to it. It's got that woodiness, a lot of isoe super, making it easy to wear. The opening is the most challenging bit, but Terra d'Hermes is the perfect mature man's signature, where at any time, this is a distinct mature man's uh, cologne that just makes people remember you. But it's very easy to, it's a very easy fragrance to wear in that regard. If you want to go a little bit more unsafe, add some Iris. Iris, I think, still works more on the mature side, but you go for something like Prada Lom Intense or the Dior Homme Original. These are <laughs> iris-based signatures that make you smell a little bit more interesting, but still refined, elegant. Both sides of this, of the coin here, are gonna be for gentlemen who dress well. So that's why I say be more mature, dress well. I think be 25 and up for these kind of signature fragrances, but I think these achieve a, a similar effect. I think this might be a controversial pick at this point so let me guys let me know guys if you agree in the comments down below next functional fragrance is for somebody who wants to say wear something sweet at all times that's going to be prada luna rosa sport it takes the lamal dna but makes it more inoffensive and more of a daily workhorse fragrance you wear for eight hours but it's a soft projection it's a vanilla based fragrance that's still light enough to be worn in the summertime so that just kind of shows how easy this is to uh, to grab and i think it's a very nice signature in that regard at the same time, if you want to be a bit more creative, it will smell like caramel popcorn or caramel hazelnut popcorn. At the same time, you go for one million lucky. And again, I, th I think this isn't a too loud a projector. It has some fresh ozonic notes in there as well that balances it out and means you can wear it at all times. I think maybe one million lucky is actually a really good school fragrance because it still has that playful vibe to it whilst not being loud and annoying enough to be unsuitable for school so these two are what i suggest as your sweet signatures for guys who wants to wear inoffensive sweet fragrances staying on the sweet playful vibe we'll go for the functional paco rabanne's invictus or what i usually recommend over that is rosasi hawas big loud bubblegum fragrances that have enough freshness to them it is that mainstream DNA that's just ruled the 2010s. It's not gonna be the most unique at this point, hence why it's more in the functional category now, because of how mainstream it's become. But again, it is youthful, compliment-getting, loud, attention-grabbing. This is for a guy, kind of guy who wants to be more sexy, but in a light, fresh way at the same time. But then if you wanna be a little bit more artistic with your loud and sweet fragrance that pulls uh, attention and compliments, you go for Black Orchid by Tom Ford. And more recently, I've acquired this. Black Orchid's Parfum. This new flanker by Tom Ford, I think smells more masculine than the traditional Black Orchid, which is a very much personality-driven fragrance. You gotta smell it and see if you match it with your personality. It doesn't speak to your soul. In my opinion, I always say the original Black Orchid is too feminine. The Parfum makes it more masculine, in my opinion, more boozy. It's got this prominent rum notes in here. They dry down more similarly, but this is more smooth and again, not overly sweet. I think this is better signature material. They're not different enough in, to the fact that you have to you know, sell your original Black Orchid and get the Parfum, but I would suggest if you already own the Black Orchid original, finish it off and upgrade to the Parfum. I definitely think for men, this is better. So it achieves the similar effect of the bubblegum DNA. <laughs> unique, more unique, definitely. A loud, sweet, compliment getting and fun for a really laid back guy who wants something that would be really memorable. Go for Black Orchid Parfum. Of course, we have to talk about the Aventus DNA. When I say the Aventus DNA, I also talk about all its clones that we obviously know exist in the community. This is the king as well in the fragrance community, Aventus. It has a smoky masculine effect to it. A lot of guys will say that this gets a lot of attention from women, but it also is known to get a lot of attention from men. I think this is the kind of signature you go for when you want respect from both genders. You're not just trying to be playful, sweet and sexy for as many women as possible. You want respect and a, a nice, fresh, smoky signature here from the Aventus DNA. It is magical stuff and it's popular for a reason. Now, if you want to achieve a similar effect, fresh, smoky, masculine, a real man-man's fragrance, you go for Dior Fahrenheit. Uh, it has a 
a maturity. I think Adventus has a good amount of maturity to it, and I think your Fahrenheit definitely has a maturity to it. Maybe be yeah, 25 and up, dress mature, dress well. It has a slight old school vibe to it, but it has it's a petroleum <laughs> opening. It smells like gasoline. And that is a lot more creative than uh, than Aventus, in my opinion. It's a little more unsafe, but I think it's still a really cool fragrance. I think your Fahrenheit, although highly reformulated, is still a masterpiece. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think this opinion is controversial? Is your Fahrenheit the creative, artistic, more artistic, unsafe? counterpart to the Aventus DNA? Let me know in the comments down below. Penultimately, we have Aqua Di Gio, the DNA, as well as Versace Pour Homme and Alorum Sport. I put them all together because these are the safe daily drivers for guys who want citrus aquatic fragrances that have a sharpness to them that you can wear in more hot weather. Some guys like these really sharp, fresh fragrances. If you want to be more creative, again, we're making another return to Oud. I'm going to recommend to you guys Aqua de Parma's Oud, which is, I've always said in this channel is extremely underrated. It's a beautiful citrus-based, almost barbershop-like Oud fragrance, which I think has an aquatic effect to it as well, even though it's not listed in the notes. I think this is a very fresh, sharp Oud fragrance that is extremely versatile. Oud usually isn't always versatile, but this is. Underrated, it's beast mode as well, lasts about 12 hours. And so I think if you want a more mature, elegant and interesting take on that fresh sharp citrus aquatic DNA, go for ADP Ouds. Finally, we have my, one of my most recent pickups uh, in my collection is going to be a La Nuit de L'Homme's Blue Electrique. I've always thought that La Nuit de L'Homme could be worn as, an, as a daytime fragrance anyways. Now I think Blue Electrique gives you enough of a performance to make it a signature worthy fragrance. So Blue Electric is for the kind of guy who wants something that is fresh, but it's very sexy. So this is for the kind of guy who wants to go for maximum compliments, maximum sex appeal, and but at the same time, not overly sweet. It has a spiciness to it, but it's not overly sweet. So it's a very balanced, sexy man's fragrance. If you want to play it a bit more unsafe, a little bit more artistic, it's, I know in the community, we appreciate leather fragrances, but it's very strange for a man to smell of leather for a signature scent. You go for the more smoky, leather-based Tom Ford's ombre leather. Again, a balanced, sexy man's fragrance. Maybe the kind of guy who wears darker clothes, black t-shirts, leather jackets. That's the kind of personality that would rock it really well. I think ombre leather is underrated as a signature. And if you really want to push that DNA to the max, you go for Tuscan leather or Rosasi's La Yukawa. This was a really difficult video to make, guys, because it's difficult to take our traditional safe DNAs on one side and then try to find what would be a signature, a versatile, but also more creative and unsafe counterpart to these. Let me know, guys. Let's play a little exercise. What is your safe signature fragrance and what do you think would be the equivalent as the creative counterpart, similar to what I've done in this video today? Let me know if there's any opinions in this video that you disagree with. Make sure to check out our videos as well in the meantime, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Say it with me now, class dismissed.